Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Hall. This is Reading 8, and we're going to start off our Reading 8 year with a short story unit. Now this is going to be one of your first assignments to go into Skyward. It is a fill-in-the-blank assignment. It is on Google Classroom. It's a Google Doc. So you're going to open up that Google Doc. It's going to look exactly the same as my screen is here, as you can see on your screen. And your job is to fill in each of these shaded purple boxes with one or two words only. That's it, one or two words. Now please make sure you spell those one or two words correctly. To check that out when you are done, go up to Tools, Spelling and Grammar, Spelling and Grammar Check. Boom, done. And then you're going to uh, share that with me and or submit it. So to get our stories off, our short stories, excuse me, uh, off and running, uh, let's look at this assignment to fill in the notes. Now you can watch this video specifically and kind of listen to our little lecture as we're going through. I've also posted some extra videos that kind of talk about the same thing. Either of those can help you with this assignment. So let's get going. Short stories have multiple things, and I have them here in kind of um, outline form. There's settings, there's characters, there's point of view, uh, there's themes, there's a plot, and then there's plot development. We're going to talk about all those things here. So let's pop, pop back up to uh, number one. Our setting, simply, setting is the time and the place in which a story is going to occur. That can include more than just time and place, but uh, time and place are always in play. Uh, it can also include customs and ideas and values, beliefs, that sort of thing. So, for example, if you think about our own American history of Paul Revere and uh, his whole story of warning if the British are coming, one if by land, two if by sea, uh, that whole thing. Uh, the time would be colonial America. The place would be Boston. So that is our setting if, for example, we're talking about Paul Revere. Now, moving on to number two, there are always characters in a short story. They're simply the actors. Um, they can be people. They can be other living things. They can be animals. Uh, they can be non-living things, like the weather could be a character in a story. You think of someone like out on the sea in a boat and a big storm brews up, and that weather can play a definite part in that story. So there's two specific characters that we're worried about. Um, specifically, the major characters would be the protagonist. Protagonist. P-R-O-T-A-G-O-N-I-S-T. Check my spelling on that. Uh, this is going to be the main character, and they have to be in every single story. Protagonists have to be in every single story. Because you got to start with someone somewhere, right? Now, there's always going to be some force acting against that protagonist. That person is the antagonist. Let me write this one down here. I'm a, I'm a writer as we spell. Antagonists, A-N-T-A-G-O-N-I-S-T, those are the people that are in conflict with our main character or our protagonist. So, for an example, we have the Three Little Pigs story as an example here. Our protagonist would be the Three Little Pigs. All right, and they are um, trying to outsmart the antagonist, which is the wolf, simply enough. Okay, so protagonists are the main character. They have to be there. Um, antagonists are optional, but good stories have antagonists. Um, the story is really not much of a story without a problem or a conflict. So protagonist, antagonist. Points of view. Now points of view in a story, that's the angle that the narrator is going to tell that story from. All right. Pers first person point of view is probably one of the more popular. I would say first and third person we talk about these are going to be the most popular um, points of view we're going to come across uh, this year. Probably ever. Um, in all of your, your reading life here. Now, first person, that person telling the story is in the story. So they're going to say, I or me, I did this, I did that. Um, when I was with him, we uh, went here, we went there. Uh, me, I are the main um, words that this narrator is going to use because they're there and they're telling you what's happening in that story. Second person is a little bit rarely used. I'm not going to talk about it a lot because I don't want you to confuse you as much. Um, but second person is usually in a letter format 
And the main word being used is you, because the author is, or the narrator is addressing to you, or uh, whomever the letter is uh, intended for. So we're not going to talk about that too much. Uh, first and third is what we're worried about here. Third person, okay? Third person narration, the character is not in the story. They are outside the story. And there's three ways that they can tell this story, okay? The first one, and we are right here is third person omniscient point of view. That's a big word, omniscient. Omniscient just means all knowing. I know everything already. I've been there. I've, I've experienced this. I'm all knowing, okay? Um, that person, that narrator already knows the entire story as they're telling it to you. They've been there. It's already happened. It's old news, okay? They, they already know that story. The second person, uh, or second uh, third person uh, type of point of view is third person limited point of view okay and they're telling the story from outside the story but it's probably still going on so if you think of I don't know maybe there's a scuffle in the hallway at school you know there's some people arguing at a locker and you were at the other end of the hallway and it's happening at the opposite end of the hallway and you are walking down the hallway and you're watching it as it's going on, and you're telling someone next to you that's shorter than you that uh, can't see what's going on, what's going on. So there's these two people down at the end of the hallway. Yeah, so and so is down there, and I see them by their locker, and oh, oh, um, she's shoving her, and really, really, yeah, tell me what's going on. I don't know. It's going on right now. So third person limited point of view. You or the narrator uh, are not in the story, and it's happening as it occurs. Okay, so the narrator's telling the story as it's happening or as it is occurring. Okay, now the other and the last third person point of view is objective. Okay, now this story has happened, it's all done, but the person telling the story only gives the facts the facts, the important information, no extra information, no opinions only the facts okay the who the what the when the where the why the how so it happened on this day these people were there this is uh, the time of day this is exactly what happened where they were why it happened how it happened there's no outside information like oh I don't like this person or she was wearing a purple shirt he was wearing orange shoes none of that it's only the facts that pertain to the story the who the what the when the where the why and the how Okay, so we're at the outline point Roman numeral four right here. And with our theme, the theme is what you're supposed to learn from the story. The main message that uh, is to be learned. Okay, um, and that can come in two ways. That can come via stated theme where you're told what you're supposed to learn or it can can come via implied theme where you have to figure out uh, what the story is teaching you. Now with younger children's stories you're probably going to see more stated themes. In this story you're going to learn why you should do this or shouldn't do that. But as people age and as readers get more intelligent um, you're going to see implied themes a lot more. This year you're probably going to see more implied themes than stated themes. You have to figure out what the story is trying to teach. What's the moral? What's the lesson? What do these characters teach you? Okay, so the theme is the message to be learned, and either you are told what you're going to be learned, or you have to figure it out. Okay? Now, plot. Plot is simply a sequence of events dealing with solving a problem. Now, problem is a, uh, another word in, in stories. It's usually called a conflict. So problem and conflict are uh, interchangeable in this sense, okay? Conflict is your problem. Plot is how we deal with solving that problem. Now, there's two types of conflicts. External means outside. Internal means inside. And when we talk about those, we were talking about a character. So either the problem is happening outside of the character or within the character themselves, usually in their mind, okay? So the external conflict, it's a struggle between characters and outside elements, other people, other things, out in nature, weather, 
Uh, maybe it's a job. Maybe it's society that's hard on that person. Anything that's not specifically that person themselves happening outside, that is external. Internal is a struggle inside or within that character. And it's usually, like the notes say, it's a mental decision. Uh, it's someone struggling with like a big task or an upcoming event. Maybe it's a health issue like depression um, and that sort of thing. Emotions, they're upset, they're sad. So it's something inside that person mentally, usually within them. Okay, so problems can be external outside or internal inside. Now, scrolling down to the end of this assignment, um, plot development. There are five types of plot development. If you watch the Khan Academy video, this will also kind of draw that out for you. And as we scroll down, we're going to see this plot triangle. It's also called, in the fancy word, Freytag's Pyramid, in case you ever want to know that. Um, but this is the, the part of every story, how it starts and how it's going to end. Okay. Now, when you're working on this assignment, a right here is the same as number one right here. B right here is the same as number two right here. C is three, four is D, and five is E. So if you start in order and go down top to bottom like this, you're going to start in the left part of the triangle. These are going to be your same answers, top to bottom going this way when you answer these down here. Okay, so... As an example, A is going to include the story's characters, the setting, and the conflict. Simply put, that's the introduction. Uh, sometimes it's also called the exposition. Introduction or exposition. We're going to start out at the bottom of the story here with the introduction or the exposition. Moving on to B or number two, the developing conflict. You have complications, you have twists, you have problems that start to occur. Uh, that's going to be our rising action. We're going to start out with the introduction, move up the triangle, if you notice the arrow, to rising action for B and 2. And we get to our high point of the story. You know, all the problem comes to a head. Um, you know, characters might have an emotional outburst. There might, might be a big fight, um, whatever the story might pertain here. And that is the climax, the emotional high point of the story. So the top of our triangle, top of our pyramid is the climax. Now, from there, it's only one way down, okay? And going down the pyramid, down the right-hand side, um, this, we had rising action over here for number two. Number four is our falling action. It's going to show what happens to the characters after that high point of the story is reached. You know, characters had a big blow up here. Maybe they start to make up and figure out their problems and become friends again, whatever the story might be, in number four or D. And then we're getting to the bottom here, E. Down here, it's going to show how the conflict or the problem is solved. That's the resolution. Uh, another fancy word for that is the denouement. But resolution is probably more commonly used. Resolution or denouement. That's going to show how that problem is solved. Okay? Check out, make sure you fill out your answers for A through E are going to be the same order for 1 through 5 down here. Make sure they match up and make sure that you check your spelling on your notes before you turn this in. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.